Hi, uh, my name is Ingeborg. I'm an Icelandic composer and I'm cur currently doing my masters in electronic music composition and recording media in Mills College in Oakland. I didn't really get what was expected of me from this Pekka Kutsia presentation. <laughs> I even heard that the best presentations last year were those that didn't talk at all about music, but either focused on internet animals or such funny things. For that reason, I named my presentation something funny. <laughs> so you would mistakenly sit through all of the other press presentation thinking that I was going to show you funny videos of animals. <laughs> but actually, I just plan on talking about my composition. <laughs> I'm sorry. The composition is based on earthquake data from a volcanic eruption and is played on a new instrument that I built. In the next few minutes I will explain the creation of my composition and of course pretend that I knew exactly what I was doing uh, at all times. In the beginning stages of a composition you have an empty page of infinite possibilities. I usually begin with setting some vague restric restrictions. It helps me to create a path for the composition. In the case of this composition, the restriction was to decide to make a new instrument that would be built around code. I didn't know what sort of an instrument I was going to build, so it was a process of experimentation. At this time, I would frequently ask my friends out for beer and then lure them into construction stores to test out some possibilities of screws, nails, or even gloves. My non-musical friends started to look at me differently. <laughs> Apparently, banging small pipes together publicly is not considered normal. This woman is though not my friend. She's just a woman that pops if, uh, if you Google banging pipes. <laughs> Finally, I came across an old piano. Don't laugh, I have only 20 seconds. <laughs> it was an old and rusty that the owner was selling it as furniture, not an instrument. I immediately bought this furniture piano and of course called my friends over for a beer and of course carrying the, the piano. The next step was to tear the piano to pieces. I ended up with nothing but the harp inside. And as you can see, my slave friend rested in the pool while I was working. Next step was to build feet under the harp that it would stand upon. While I worked on the hammer mechanism, building new hammers from the old piano hammers, my dad became an instrument feet builder. As you can see, this was definitely a solo project of mine. To the new hammers, I attached small motors called solenoids. These solenoids are then connected to an Arduino microcontroller that connects to the computer that then plays my composition through the programming language Pure Data. On the next slide, you will see the composition in action. built a new instrument. This instrument had many restrictions, but also many new possibilities. It has 15 hammers, each one making two sounds. One when they lift up from the strings, and the second one when they hammer the strings. At this time, a, volcan a volcano called Bárðabunga had just finished erupting in Iceland. Iceland is a very volcanic island. And the first sign of an eruption is when hundreds of earthquakes shake the ground around the volcano. It's a time of uncertainty. No one could forecast if a volcano is going to erupt, or what kind of eruption we might be facing. There is uncertainty for every Icelander. I was curious if the earthquake data might be musical. But data itself doesn't speak music. 
you have to compose it by setting up some rules. What part of the data should I use? The location, the intensity of the earthquakes, the depth? How do I use the time? Who am I? Is composition really the way to go? I should have kept with internet animals. In the first version of the, this composition, premiered in Reykjavik last summer, I mapped the Richter scale to frequency, but it felt too static, and I wanted more rhythm. The data had location, depth, and time in addition to intensity of the earthquakes. I used the depth and mapped it to rhythm. Deeper in the ground, the longer note is played. Finally, I added some live electronic improvisation taking the sound that the instrument is making and manipulating it in real time, turning a piece that would otherwise be identical each time to a life experience that is different each time it's played, and finally sending the whole thing to a surround mix and asking the audience to walk around the, the space while the piece is performed. Uh, hopefully, this presentation gave some insight into my composition or just inspired you to Google some internet animals. <laughs> Thank you. I have 20 seconds to go. Okay. Thank you. Uh,